Hey developers, today we're gonna look at Vue.js and mixins. Have you ever had a situation where you needed to share data between multiple components? Well, stay tuned, watch all the way to the end, and I'll show you how you can do that. Let's take a look. All right, I inside my app here, and I went ahead and just created it first, and so I created a really simple app. We just have two buttons. Each one of these buttons just shows a pop-up. So I'm gonna keep this really simple. I'm not gonna have any CSS or styling. I'm just gonna show you the Vue.js code itself, and we're gonna go through it. So here, you press this button, it says button one. You press this button, it says button two. So really simple, there's nothing different about that. So let's create that app first, and I'll show you how this button here and this button here are both components. And I want to share functionality between them so the alert appears on both. So here is our app here before we did anything. So we're gonna go and build up to that last one. So first we're gonna do a new view and we're gonna make sure it works. So we'll just do app here and we'll do a data function and it's gonna turn an object and in the object we're just gonna call it name. I'm just gonna call it hello world view Jess. And then inside here, I'm going to create a div with ID equals app because it has to match. And we're going to just do the curly brackets name. Let's see if it's working. I'm going to save it. All right, hello world Vue.js. So you can see that. And I'll make it a little bigger. So we know that it's talking to Vue and that that's working correctly. All right, so let's create two components. So this might be a review for you guys if you don't remember how to create components, but it's pretty simple. So there's a few ways to do this. Since we're just using a single file Vue.js file, we're not gonna do any kind of single file components that you might see if you're using the Vue CLI. I covered that in a different video. So let's create a couple of components. So first, right down here near data, well, something called components and inside here it's another object inside the object we're going to call it we'll call it um, my comp equals actually colon and we'll call it my comp I'll do comp one since we'll have two of them and we'll do my comp two equals my comp two so what this is, it's telling Vue.js that we're defining these two components. So we can just create them using uh, const variables here. So, and we'll create them like this. So comp1, it's an object. Inside the object, we'll have a template. And we'll have, we'll add some to the template here. Let's do this. Let's put div. And we'll just make a button. And button will call it button one. And we'll copy and paste that. We'll make button we'll my comp two. We'll call this comp two. And now we can use them in our app. So let's do this. Let's do my. And since we had this style here, this camel casing, we have to put a dash here. So we'll do my comp one opening closing brackets my comp 2 and we'll put a break right in the middle if we can do that uh, we'll just do it like this so refresh it all right so we have button one I'll make it a little bigger button one and button two you can see here it doesn't do anything if we look in the inspect we don't have any errors so that's good so by the way, this template, since we put this dash here, it's interpreting it um, with the line breaks and everything, so we don't have to do anything special there. Not dash, but with this uh, tack here. We're interpolating it. Uh, so let's add something, let's add an action to both of these. So if you remember in Vue.js, we call them actions. And then inside the actions, We'll go ahead and 
I'm sorry, not actions. They're called methods. I knew I mixed that up. I'm thinking of Ember.js for a second. And then inside, because in Ember.js it's called actions, but inside view it's called methods. And we'll just call something called pressed. I'll take a value. We'll pass something to it, and we'll just set an alert with that value in it. And since we want kind of the same behavior in both, we'll just paste it here, make sure we have commas in between. And we'll add a click action here. So we can do either vion, or the shorthand for it is just at click. And then we'll put in the name of the action. So we'll do pressed. And then we'll pass in something. We'll call this button one pressed. And we'll do the same thing here. Let's go back. Let's see if we can just copy and paste this. Well, let's make sure it works first with button one. Refresh it. Unexpected token. Oh, we have one, two, few ending brackets. Let's save it. There we go. So if we go back up here and hit button one, button one press. So that works. So let's go ahead and copy and paste this into the next section here. And we'll call this button two pressed. And refresh it. So now we have button one pressed, button two pressed. So really, really simple. I mean, we're not doing anything special here. But let's say we wanted to take out this method here and put it in its own mixin, um, because maybe these buttons are completely different looking. They have different styles to them. They're in different plates of the application, but we won't, we don't want to have to recreate this method. Now, of course, there's a lot of different ways we could do this. We could pass in this method pressed from our root Vue.js app itself. I mean, that would be one simple way of doing it. Uh, we could, um, but the probably the best way, and just for the sake of this example, we'll go ahead and create a mixin. Now to create a mixin, it's really, really simple. It actually, we'll just create another object. So we'll call it const my button. And then inside there, we're going to take this method, make sure I get both of them, and we'll paste it. And then we'll delete the method out of here. And we'll save it. Actually, before we do that, We'll add this and we'll call it mixin. So you just call it mixin in here, uh, actually with an S at the end, mixins. And then you have an array and then you put in the array of the mixins you want to use. So we're just going to use this my button. So let's do the same thing with this one here. I'm going to delete it. Make sure I have this copied. All right, so now instead of using the method it's going to use this mixin called my button and there it is so let's save it all right button one pressed button two pressed so it works exactly the same but now instead of repeating code you know the dry principle don't repeat yourself now we have just one place where our mixin is at and then we could also do other things uh, let's say we wanted to add in a data function to here and we want just a simple toggle. So we return, remember you always have to put that in an object and we'll have a toggle and it'll just equal true for now. And then let's say this, this does true equals not true, something like that. Uh, actually make this toggle equals not toggle. We can put it inside like right here. Let's say we had a toggle here and we can put in button one or we could put in first component and then we'll do the same thing here call this second component. Now if we save it, reload it, we have first component, second component, but if we press it, and toggle is not defined, hold on one second. 
do this dot toggle. Button press, see it disappears, and it comes back. So that's just one really easy way of doing mix-ins. Like I said, this is a kind of real contrived example, but you can see how powerful this can be. You can add this mix in my button to all your different components, and all this functionality is built in. You'll have all access to all the data, you have access to all the methods, and so you can kind of create complicated UIs with a lot of different logic, and you don't have to repeat yourself every time. If one component's very similar to another component, but there's a few differences and you don't want to worry about passing in a bunch of stuff in, you can create these mixins and they work really well. And they also uh, can can work independently so they're not changing data in your components. Um, they're changing data with inside the mixin itself. So thank you for watching. If you like these type of videos, please click that subscribe button and definitely let me know what you think of mixins below. Have you used them? Do you think they're useful? They're pretty much available in all the different frameworks. So this is just how you do it in Vue.js. Thanks.